Tenzin of the USS Ankhon on August 15, 1914, marked the opening of one of the most important works of modern engineering, a canal that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Throughout the years, the Panama Canal Interoceanic Waterway has become one of the most important commercial routes in the history of humanity. The idea of expanding the canal by means of a new set of locks that would allow the passage of vessels of ever-increasing size was present from the start of the excavation works. To this end, in 1939, the United States began its excavation works. However, these works had to be suspended in 1942 with the start of World War II. And the idea of expanding the operational infrastructure of the Interoceanic Waterway had to wait. On December 31, 1999, the administration of the Panama Canal was transferred to the Republic of Panama in compliance with the Torricos Carter Treaties and the Panama Canal Authority was established. According to the Constitution of Panama, the approval of any proposal for the construction of a third set of locks or of a sea level canal through the existing route required a national referendum. In 2006, the new proposal for the expansion of the canal was submitted to the Republic of Panama. The Panama Electoral Tribunal submitted the results of a referendum whereby the people of Panama decided to expand the route. And the works began on September 3, 2007. Its expansion is the largest infrastructure project undertaken by the Panama Canal since its opening. With the construction of two new sets of locks, it provides a new traffic lane parallel to the existing canal. The program included the following projects the widening and expansion of the Atlantic and Pacific entrances to the canal, as well as of the navigation channels along the entire waterway. The creation of an access channel on the Pacific side, 6.1 kilometers long, parallel to Miraflores Lock, a 45 centimeter rise in the maximum operating level of Gatu Lake to ensure a good water supply for the canal and for the project and the design and construction of new lock complexes on the Atlantic and Pacific sides. The third locks project has two complexes, one on the Pacific side and another on the Atlantic side. The complexes operate with redundant rolling lock gates and three water saving basins in each chamber that allow the recycling of 60% of the water used in each transit. The new locks, which are 60% wider and 40% longer than those of the original canal, operate with 16 rolling gates. Simulai, a manufacturing company in northwest Italy, began building the new lock gates in October 2011. The new lock gates are 57.6 meters long and 8 to 10 meters wide. They differ slightly in height depending on their location. And the tallest, 33 meters high, were installed in lock head number 4 on the Pacific side due to the high tidal range. Their weight varies between 2,300 and 4,200 tons. The new lock gates were shipped to Panama from the port of Trieste in Italy in sets of four units on each shipment. The first new lock gates arrived at Gatun on the Atlantic side of Panama on August 20, 2013. The new 
Pacific Locks gates were transported through the canal on a barge specially built for this operation. Here, the locks are placed in their lock heads. The lower chamber of the new Agua Clara chamber on the Atlantic side is filled. Shortly thereafter, the filling of the Cocoli locks on the Pacific side starts. The locks operation tests begin. The rolling gates open and close in five minutes. In order to expand the Panama Canal, it was imperative to safeguard the green areas and wildlife. Therefore, before any machinery cut through the trees, environmental specialists conducted wildlife rescue and relocation activities. Archaeological rescue and paleontological research operations were also undertaken. However, the most valuable and significant treasure trove the Panama Canal expansion works have revealed are animal and vegetable fossils and archaeological remnants that provide new light on the rise and history of the Isthmus of Panama. The Panama Canal Reforestation Project that compensates for the building of the third set of locks is committed to the reforestation of two hectares for each area affected by the waterway extension works. trees as well as native timber forest species are among the varieties being planted. In the last 100 years, the Panama Canal has reduced its carbon dioxide emissions by 650 million tons. With the expanded canal, the goal is to increase its environmental benefits with a reduction by more than 160 million tons of CO2 during its first 10 years of operations. More than 150 million cubic meters have been excavated and dredged. 192,000 tons of steel, enough to raise 19 Eiffel Towers. It took a total of 4.4 million cubic meters of concrete to complete both new lock complexes. It required approximately 2,500 working days and more than 40,000 direct and indirect jobs filled by more than 37,000 Panamanian citizens from every province and indigenous territories. 80 other countries from the five continents of the world have been represented in the canal workforce, among them Spaniards, Belgians, and Italians. There are also records of employees native to distant places such as Gambia, Iceland, Pakistan, Swaziland, and North Korea. Finally, the new expanded canal was ready. And on June 26, its lock gates were opened for its first transit. An average of 14,000 ships transit the Panama Canal every year. The Panamax locks accommodate ships carrying up to 5,000 containers. On the other hand, the new Neo Panamax locks allow the transit of ships carrying up to a maximum of 13,000 to 14,000 containers. Likewise, new market segments such as liquefied natural gas LNG ships are being incorporated. The third set of locks that allows the passage of larger ships and can duplicate the volume of traffic and cargo also represents the possibility of expanding the entire logistics and transportation services thereby increasing the value of this route and Panama's competitiveness. The completion of these majestic works, aside from expanding the economic and commercial advantages for Panama and the world, has also added a significant volume of knowledge.
perhaps no one may ever be able to quantify what the expanded canal has contributed to the field of science and knowledge. Yet, these achievements actually exist for its workers, not in their numbers or positions attained, but in experience, the development of new skills, the expertise in the operation of modern machinery, technologies and innovative administrative processes, and the human, scientific, and technical growth for the progress of the Republic of Panama and the world.